We're using AI for war purposes now. It was only a matter of time. Meanwhile, Europe has come with the first set of regulations for AI, and ChatGPT is allowing us to keep our data private while threatening screenwriters' jobs in Hollywood. We get into all of that on this episode of AI Focus. Stay till the end to see what the future of warfare looks like when you mix it with ChatGPT. Everyone has been going bananas using OpenAI's ChatGPT chatbot, typing away and awaiting answers from the world's smartest large language model. But then the world realized that ChatGPT kept everyone's chat history, which sent all of us into a quick uproar, demanding OpenAI fix the issue. In March, some users' chat histories were even leaked thanks to a bug. ChatGPT used to keep track of all conversations to fine-tune its AI model. This caused a serious privacy issue, especially for all lawyers, corporate employees, and doctors sharing sensitive data. You can't just take people's data and expect no one to care. Haven't you been keeping up with Facebook, Sam? Well, OpenAI has quickly released a feature where users can now turn off the chat history for its ChatGPT chatbot. It's called the History Disabled Feature, and marking conversations with this will leave them untouched by models used to train the LLM. They'll be stored in the company's servers, but only reviewed as needed for abuse and will be deleted after 30 days. However, if you opt out of allowing your data to be used for training, then you don't get to keep the conversation history for yourself either. So take that. In the meantime, OpenAI is also working on a business subscription model for organizational users that need more control over their data because, you know, money. This model will follow the same data usage properties and should be released within the coming months. Perhaps OpenAI is feeling the heat, especially since the EU just created the first set of regulations for AI from a legislative body. You can leave it to Europe to act fast on moral and ethical issues, if only another country were so caring and responsible. America has reacted to all of this new AI stuff by figuring out how to apply it recklessly to war, but we'll get into that later in the video. Really, the European Parliament is making adjustments to the already existing AI Act of 2021 and have added some last-minute amendments pertaining to generative AI. The proposed regulations cover a wide range of AI applications and promote trust and transparency in the use of AI, protect fundamental rights and freedoms, and ensure safety and ethical principles in AI development and deployment. But the original act, which started being worked on back in 2020, was missing legislation regarding general purpose AI. It was ChatGPT, a generative AI that can do a wide variety of things, including responding to text prompts, that made legislators rush to add finishing touches to the AI Act. One major change added to the Act is that generative tools such as ChatGPT, Midjourney, and Dali would have to disclose the use of any copyrighted material used to develop their systems. That sounds like common sense. Good job, EU. Perhaps this can lead to ways for human creators to get paid some sort of settlement for their part in developing this tech. Other requirements for generative AI include testing for and preventing risks to health, safety, the environment, and fundamental rights. The act also requires documentation for any risks that are deemed unable to prevent and reasons for why this is so. But there are experts who aren't so sure this will work. An analyst at Enterprise Management said, quite simply, I have no clue how one regulates something like ChatGPT without diminishing the effectiveness of their solution. He goes on to say, once the tech becomes accessible, like what Meta's Llama model aims to do, any bad guy can make an evil ChatGPT model. Then what do they plan to do? The rest of the AI Act classifies existing AI into categories based on risk, minimal, limited, acceptable, and high. AI systems that pose an unacceptable risk, like biometric identification systems, will not be allowed, save for very special conditions. High-risk AI systems can be used, but they must have the proper documentation and have gone through testing. These include autonomous vehicles and medical devices. On May 11th, all groups will have to vote to finalize the regulations. By the way, if you're enjoying this content and you want to stay updated on all the latest AI news and updates, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. Now back to the video. Even Hollywood is seeing attempts at regulation, but here it's the screenwriters fighting for their livelihoods. 
the union representing Hollywood laid out its list of must-haves for contract negotiations with studios, which included the usual demands for fair compensation. But this time it included a new element, an aim to regulate the use of material produced using artificial intelligence or similar technologies. Mike Schur, the creator of Parks and Rec, said it's not out of the realm of possibility that before 2026, which is the next time we will negotiate with these companies, they might just go, you know what, we're good. We have a bunch of AIs that are creating a bunch of entertainment that people are kind of okay with. The Writers Guild of America seeks to make one thing clear. Writers are human beings. Hollywood writers have become more and more nervous about ChatGPT becoming more adept at writing in the style of authors. What happens when you keep feeding it Christopher Nolan scripts? There are two major demands the Writers Guild is making when it comes to automation. First, no literary material can be written or rewritten by chatbots. They also want to make sure chatbots can't be used to generate source material that is adapted to the screen by humans. But now, let's get into AI's involvement in warfare. Palantir is a company owned by billionaire Peter Thiel that sells domestic surveillance services to US Immigration and Customs Enforcement. And now they're trying their luck with the Pentagon. Palantir Artificial Intelligence Platform, or AIP software. This software will run large language models like GPT-4 and others on private networks. They even have a demo where they show how Palantir would be used to fight in a war. Here, an operator uses a ChatGPT style chatbot to order drone reconnaissance, make multiple plans of attack, and prepare a way to jam enemy communications. In this scenario, a military operator responsible for monitoring activity in Eastern Europe receives an alert from AIP that an enemy is gathering military equipment near friendly forces. The operator then asks the chatbot for more details and asks the chatbot to guess what the units may be. The operator then asks the AI to take pictures, at which time a Reaper MQ-9 drone launches to take photos revealing a Soviet-era tank near friendly forces. The operator then asks AIP of three possible actions it can take to target the enemy equipment. And these options get sent up the chain of command. These options include attacking with an F-16, long-range artillery, or javelin missiles. The AI will even let everyone know if nearby troops have enough javelin missiles for the mission. This is bizarre. The scenario involves a human, but for not much more than to ask the AI what to do in the first place. Drone warfare has already made it so much easier to kill with the push of a button, and this system from Palantir makes it that much more automated and easier. What's also concerning is that this isn't a military-specific AI or LLM in the system, but already existing fine-tuned systems. But these systems still have issues like hallucinations. One of the systems, GPT Neo X20B, is an open-source alternative to GPT-3 created by Eleuther AI. Another one of their models convinced a Belgian man who talked to it for six weeks to kill himself. Palantir is trying to make us think they've created a legal and ethical way to incorporate AI into war, but they really didn't create anything but a volatile new weapon. Palantir says AIP's operation is based on three pillars of trust. The first is deploying it on a classified system. The second being that the users can toggle the actions of every LLM on the network. The AIP will also keep a digital record of everything on the network. The third pillar is AIP's industry-leading guardrails that stop it from taking unauthorized actions. I somehow don't feel any safer. If we think back to World War I, we'll recognize a horrific tragedy that was initiated by egos and an insatiable itch to try out new technology like the machine gun. Every country was looking for a reason to use their new tech at the cost of millions of lives. Our situation today eerily mirrors that sentiment. World leader egos are more out of proportion than ever. Tensions are high and we have some new tech to be readily applied to weapons. We can only pray that our ignorance as a global society in the 21st century has diminished since early in the previous one. What do you think about using AI for war? Where do you see this taking us? Will the US ever create regulations? Let me know in the comments below. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Click a video on the screen to watch something you haven't seen. And thanks for visiting AI Focus.